Perfect. Well, uh, for those 16 people that are online, welcome to our training course on Think Like a Leader and Act Like a Leader. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this course and it will be a pleasure to discuss with you the art of leadership in the next couple of weeks. Um, me and Aisha will have really prepared uh, an, a program that will help you understand leadership in today's age, also uh, understand the traits of leaders in today's age, and at the end of the day, create the best version of yourself. Um, so, first of all, I will give you a general overview of uh, the next four weeks of the things that we are going to cover, and then Aisha will start with her part of the, of the course, and then I will continue with my part of the course. Uh, today, we will discuss some general things about leadership. We will start with defining leadership, what actually leadership is. Um, I will cover disruptive economy and what it means to be a leader in a disruptive economy. And I will also understand the traits of disruptive leaders and how you can create change within your life, within your organization. Uh, in week two, we will cover uh, we'll go in, into more depth in understanding personal branding and reputation management. Because one thing that makes great leaders is the art of reputation management. And I'm sure you, you, you've heard uh, this quote by Warren Buffett. He basically says that it takes years to build a reputation, but uh, uh, it can take one small mistake and your reputation will be gone in five seconds. And we will discuss a lot of leaders that have had an amazing career, but they've done one or two mistakes that, uh, that have destroyed their, their reputation and sometimes the reputation of their companies. And we will also discuss forgivability because at the end of the day, as leaders, uh, you know, we have to develop the art of forgivability uh, for people to, uh, to view us as someone that is close to them, someone that is their friend. So when we make a mistake, you know, we have the space for forgiveness. Week three, we recover. We will go more into depth about personal communications, about learning to communicate with clarity, uh, developing the art of listening, uh, learning not to rely on scripts. So we'll see some amazing videos about speeches, and hopefully, uh, week three will help you uh, develop your own presentation skills and your own um, uh, skills to develop great speech. And then we'll finish week four with uh, a great uh, lesson on motivation uh, with Aisha. Wolf. Uh, this is pretty much the general overview of the course. My idea of the course is to really give you practical insight into leadership. Uh, unfortunately, I will be honest with you from week one, uh, leadership is not something that you can learn in an online course. It's not something that you can read in a book. All of this video that we will share, all of this uh, webinars, all of this uh, case studies that we will share with you, uh, their aim is to inspire you. At the end of the day, you have to um, overcome your own challenges in life and develop your own story. Uh, but I really hope that we will have a great platform to exchange views. Uh, I also would like to hear about you, your definitions of leadership. Uh, and basically, you know, let's just exchange views. And hopefully, uh, at the end of the week four, we'll leave the course uh, stronger and more equipped to handle the challenges of today's fast uh, world. Uh, I should go. Uh, I think it's uh, you can take over now and uh, do introduction to your part of the course and your lesson, and then I will take over afterwards. Okay, thank you, Kosta. Um, I'm sharing my uh, PowerPoint document now. I think my presentation is still on, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it is downloading now. I guess it is okay. Okay, and can you hear me well? Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our course. Um, by the way, thank you, Kosta. My name is Ayşe Gül, and today we will talk about meaning of leadership, qualities and traits of a leader, 
and difference between managers and leaders and during first 15 minutes of the course. And you can see my outline. So let's start with uh, meaning of leadership. Uh, what is leadership? And uh, each of us believe uh, we have a good idea about what it means to be a good leader. But when it comes to defining the concept, uh, the picture is not so clear. Uh, for some of us, leadership is motivation. For others, it accuse result. Uh, for some of them, some of us, uh, it, is, it, it is like it's kind of inspiration. So uh, we can define uh, leadership is the ability to adapt the setting so everyone feels empowered to contribute creatively to solving the problems. And now uh, let's divide uh, words of this definition. And leadership is an ability, right? And what does it mean? Uh, it means a leader has a capacity uh, to do something through talent and skill. Talent is natural ability and skill is proficiency gained through training and experience. And talent certainly helps, but it is not required. I know many people whose natural leadership uh, ability was close to zero, but through training, experience, and most of all, became great leaders. And the other thing, uh, leadership is uh, adaptive. It means the leader makes adjustments. A leader who fails to adjust to the territory will lose their way. No one will follow someone who is lost. And uh, on the other hand, leadership acts on a setting. Uh, what it means, uh, a leader adjusts the state of surroundings and people. A leader carefully observes those states and discerns significance looking for how to adapt uh, the setting most effectively. And the other thing, leadership uh, empowers. Um, that is, a leader inspires confidence and self-esteem of followers. And that inspiration comes in many flavors. Some leaders inspire by bold talk, others by soft talk, and others by their example. Uh, by being your uh, role, mo role model. There are many ways to empower rather than a single way. And it is a uh, mostly used uh, tool for leaders. On the other hand, leadership acts on people's feelings. A leader finds ways to link to the people's instinct or intuition. Uh, leaders help everyone feel empowered which in many organizations with bad histories is a leap of faith. If a leader can also provide concrete evidence that helps the empowerment, it is good and it's wonderful, but evidence usually comes after the leadership actions produce the desired uh, result. And also, uh, leadership also creates contribution. Every member gives something, and sometimes that may be sharing an idea, and sometimes that may be holding an idea in reserve and allowing someone else to arrive at the same idea and share it. And this is a kind of contribution. And finally, we can say that leadership is about solving the problem and closing the gap between things as desire and things as perceived. Everyone works on solutions to intermediary problems while keeping in mind the ultimate problem. And that means closing a gap for the silence or customer. And uh, the other things, uh, leadership fosters creative, creativity. Uh, it means imaginative use of limited resources. A leader that uh, enables people to use their imagination is a step closer to solving problems faster, better, and cheaper. And the more complex story uh, reinforces that everyone on a team can be a leader. The most successful teams create chain reactions of leadership 
adaptation triggers long chains of further adaptations that ultimately solve seemingly impossible problems. Actually, uh, we can also define leadership based on some uh, elements that we all agree. And here are common elements to define leadership. And you can see uh, on the slide. And one of them is vision. Uh, <clears throat> leadership means having a vision and sharing it with others. Only when you get to inspire others, it is possible to share a common goal towards which to direct the efforts and dedication of the entire team. The other thing is motivation, and it will be subject uh, for uh, week four for this course. Uh, motivation and about motivation, uh, we can say that the leader knows how to motivate better than anyone else. It is one of their main functions as people managers. Through motivation, the leader channels the energy and professional potential of their co-workers in order to achieve the objective. And the other, uh, the other element is serving. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, we can say <clears throat> we can say that group members uh, must have and feel the support of their leaders, and the tools needed to do their jobs properly must be available to them. They must have recognition for their efforts and know that there is a person paying attention in order to correct that habit. That's all part of a leadership which serves the team and not the uh, opposite. And the other one, uh, the other element is empathy. One of the basic qualities of any leader uh, seeking success is precisely emotional intelligence. That ability uh, makes leaders put themselves in the place of others, uh, understand their concerns, and solve problems. Leaders know the secrets of their company and therefore can empathize uh, with customers and members of their team. That empathy gets to inspire and establish links that will ultimately lead to success. Uh, the, the other uh, common element uh, to define leadership is creativity. And good leaders are able to create an environment. What type of environment uh, will encourage all the members of their team to develop their skills and imagination so that they can contribute to the common project and vision of the company? If you want to lead successfully, respect the creativity of others and learn from the people around you. Their ideas will uh, surely prove to be positive for you and for your team. Uh, other element, thoroughness. A good leader sets the bar high for their people because they want to reach the goals and make the best of their team. Only a demanding leader uh, will achieve great results. And in addition to this thoroughness, uh, the leader must know how to listen in order to know the needs of people and then provide the necessary time and resources for them to do their job properly and therefore meet what is demanded of them. And this means terms. And the other one, managing. And we will uh, talk about the difference between managing and leading. But this, uh, the leader must be at the forefront to lead and guide their team throughout the whole process until the goal is reached. But leaders also know uh, than to step back and make their team take the initiative. In this way, the team gets the chance to develop both personally and professionally. Pure management focuses on the tasks and while real leadership focuses on the people. Uh, the other thing, team building, and true leadership is about working in a team. 
to reach a common goal, uh, not personally. People management is one of the most difficult tasks faced by leaders. Uh, thanks to positive attitudes essential in good leaders and the trust in their workmates, people get better results. Team aware leaders take responsibility when something is wrong and they reward the group after a job well done. And it means a kind of motivation. And the other uh, element, uh, taking risks. The leader is one responsible for taking the risks that others are not willing to take. They are different and they are confident enough to make a decision. And if they make a mistake, the leader must have the courage to rectify, assume their guilt, and take the right path without blaming it on the team. Good leaders know how to get ahead of their time and they see opportunities where others cannot and know how to spread the enthusiasm for their vision to try to make it real. And the last one is improving. And true leadership seeks continuous improvement. Leaders have the ability to turn the people in their teams into stars, people who have improved and developed their skills through the influence of their leaders. And in short, the definition of leadership has nothing to do with the hierarchy or position of anyone in the company. It has nothing to do with imposing leads, but with listening to those who know. And we can say that leadership is the attitude assumed by those looking for something different, who are committed to achieving a goal and whose conviction they manage to transmit to others. Uh, through optimism to reach a common goal. Optimism and motivation and inspira inspira inspiration, inspiration to reach a common goal. And based on common elements of leadership, uh, uh, I explain, you can think about whether you are a leader or not. Maybe a little bit brainstorming uh, you need help. Uh, we can say uh, every organization needs leaders at every level and leaders can be found and or nurtured if you look for some traits or some characteristics. Uh, what are they? And let's look at leadership qualities and traits. Oh, before this, uh, you can see some quotes on leadership, uh, for example, from Henry Ford, uh, there is a sentence here, don't find fault and find a remedy. It's about solving problems uh, rather than followers. And the other one, uh, Robin Sharma, leadership is not about a title or a, uh, sorry, Leadership is not about a title or a designation, it's about impact, influence, and inspiration. And similarly, John Quincy Adams said that uh, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. And we say, uh, we can say you are, you are a leader. And let's talk about the uh, traits of a leader. First of all, uh, we can talk about integrity. Integrity means uh, integration of outward actions and inner values of a leader. A person of integrity is the same on the outside and inside. A leader must have the trust of followers and therefore uh, must display integrity and to convince and to motivate followers. And second one, dedication. Dedication uh, means spending whatever time or energy is necessary to accomplish the task at hand. A leader inspires dedication by example, doing whatever it takes to 
complete the next step toward the vision. The other one, humility, and leaders with humility recognize that they are no better or worse than other members of the team. And leaders, such leaders also understand that their status does not make them a god. For example, Gandhi is a role model for Indian leaders and he perceives a follower century leadership role. And you will see uh, leadership style uh, with Costa and after me. And the, the other uh, trait, openness. And it means being able to listen to new ideas, even if they don't conform to the usual way of thinking. Good leaders are able to suspend judgment while listening to others' ideas, as well as accept new ways of doing things that someone else taught. Openness uh, builds mutual respect and trust between leaders and followers, and it also keeps the team well supplied with new ideas that can further its vision and its goals. The other trait, creativity, is the ability to think differently, to get outside of the box that constrains solution. Creativity gives leaders the ability to see things that others have not seen and does lead uh, followers in new directions. Actually, the most important question that a leader can ask is what if? And fairness uh, means dealing with others consistently and justly. A leader must check all of the facts and hear everyone out before passing to judgment. And a uh, leader must avoid leaping to conclusions based on incomplete uh, evidence. Assertiveness, uh, the ability to clearly state what one expects so that there will, there will be no misunderstanding. A leader must be assertive to get desired uh, results. A sense of humor is vital to relieve tension and boredom in your organizations, in business life, as well as to diffuse hostility. And effective leaders know uh, how to use humor to energize followers. Humor is a form of power, actually, that provides some control over uh, the work environment. And it makes uh, business uh, workplace to enjoyable. <clears throat> the other one, uh, honesty, and people want to follow an honest leader, and in order to be seen as an honest individual, you will have to go out of your way to display honesty. People will not assume you are honesty simply because you have never been uh, caught lying. The other thing is about uh, vision and similar to vision, forward looking. And the whole point of leadership is figuring out where to go from where you are now. While you may know uh, where you want to go, people won't see that unless you actively communicate it with them. And people uh, want to and people also want to follow someone who is competent. And uh, it doesn't mean a leader needs to be the foremost, foremost expert on every area of the entire organization, but they need to be able to demonstrate competency. And inspiration and a subject for uh, need for, and we will be together again. And people want to be inspired. In fact, there is a whole class of people who will follow an inspiring leader. Even when the leader has no other quality, and if you have developed the other trait, being inspiring is usually just a matter of communicating clearly and with passion. Being inspiring means telling people how your organization is going to change the world. 
Actually, a great example of uh, inspiration is, you know, Steve Jobs. And uh, when Steve Jobs saw the CEO from Pepsi by asking him, do you want to sell sugar, sugar water for the rest of your life? Or do you want to change the world? And it's a meaningful example for us. And the last one, intelligence. Uh, it is something that can be difficult to develop. And developing intelligence is uh, a lifestyle choice. To develop intelligence, you need to commit to continue uh, life, lifelong learning, and both formally and informally. And, uh, and you need to uh, have intelligence style, emotional and the others, and to be a good leader. And uh, last part of uh, my presentation is about difference between leaders and managers. And according to Warren Bennis, and uh, I put some sentences of uh, Warren Bennis here, and lead, not manage. Many an, instit many an institution is very well managed and very poorly led. And they handle day-to-day -day routine, but never ask whether the written should be done at all. And uh, you can see the difference between leaders and managers in this style. And here, uh, the manager's job is to plan, organize, and coordinate. And the other one, the leader, the leader's job is to inspire and motivate. And as you can see, uh, we can say that managers maintain something and leaders develop uh, rather than maintaining something. And the manager focuses on systems and structure, and the leader focuses on people. And the manager relies on control, and the leader inspires trust. And the manager, this is important thing, the manager asks how and when, the leader asks what and why. And uh, it focuses this kind of question. And the manager has, manager accepts the status quo and the leader challenges it. And I'm finishing my presentation with uh, Roosevelt sentence about difference between leaders and managers. And as you can see, people ask the difference between a leader and a boss, and the leader leads and the boss drives. And drive, uh, it means maintaining uh, existence one. And uh, thank you for your attention. and. Uh, good luck for your assignments and the rest of uh, rest of our course. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Ashavu. Now I have to work out how I put my content back. Ashivu, can you close your file so I can open mine? Okay, Alexander is in your phone. Good. Okay. Um, here we are. Very good. Well, thank you, Ashivu, for that in-depth presentation. I think you've done, uh, you did actually a big part of, of my presentation, but I think we will complement each other with the things that I'm about to do. Um, just to work out. Take over as, as presenter above the presentation. You see how technologically ready I am.
Okay, sorry guys for that. It's been a long day. So, uh, in the next 30 minutes, I will talk about how you should develop your own leadership style in a disruptive economy. Uh, I will talk a little bit about history of leadership and how obviously leadership has adapted and changed in the 21st century. And I will talk a lot about disruptive leadership because it's something that is really close to my heart and it's something that I think uh, has completely redefined leadership because we're living in an era where the concept of leadership, where the definition of leadership is changing on daily basis. Uh, first, I would like to give a short introduction about myself because we will be hanging out for the next four weeks, so we, we need to uh, get to know each other. I'm the founder of P-World. Uh, I write for the Huffington Post also in my free time, and also when I have time, I write business books. Uh, this is my uh, leader headshot. <laughs> But to tell you the truth, like most of the people around the world, most of the time, I feel like this. Uh, we are all trying to find a leadership style that suits us. We are all trying to find a um, solution to the challenges. As I said, the world is changing rapidly. And especially if you run your own business, you have to have your eyes open 24-7 because things are changing so fast that if you do not adapt to change, uh, you're in a danger to lose your business. Uh, and one thing that... I feel that it's very important, I need to mention it from, from day one. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, the success of you as a, as a businessman, as a leader, uh, doesn't really define you as a person. Uh, I think all of us need to define in our lives what is really important in our lives. And for me, it's always my family, uh, because throughout the years, uh, I've had my own business for seven years, I've realized that uh, the success or the failures at work do not define me as a person. Uh, spending time with my family, uh, educating my daughter, building a great human out of her, that's what defines me as a person. And this is very important because in life, you will have ups, you'll feel like you're on the top, but you also feel like you're in the mud. And it doesn't mean the moment you're in the mud, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Bad things happen to everyone. Really short, P-World is an international creative agency that I started seven years ago. We do business events around the world. Uh, we are specialized in three brands, uh, marketing, PR, and HR. As I said, we are present in 30 countries around the world. This is our map. We started first with the region in Central Europe, then we expanded to Central Asia, Middle East, North Africa. And what I'm really happy about is that this year we are also organizing next month, actually, our first event in New York. Uh, and in 2017, we're looking to expand in four new countries, including Buenos Aires and Miami. So, think like a leader, act like a leader. I think in order for us to go deeper into the topics of leadership, we have to understand the world we live in. And this slide, it's very cliche, because I, I understand that you've probably seen this slide hundreds of times. But this slide pretty much explains how the business world functions today. It's fascinating that Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. The world's most popular media owner creates no content, Facebook. Alibaba is the most valuable retailer, but it has no inventory. Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. So you see, the world is changing very fast. And all of these companies, like Facebook, like Alibaba, Airbnb, Tumblr, uh, Twitter, all of these are companies based on disruption. These are companies that are in a way changing our, our world unexpectedly. If you look at the world 10 years ago, and if you look at the Fortune 500 list of companies, I'm sure you, you, you know about the Fortune 500 companies. These are the 500 uh, the, mo the 500 richest companies in the world. So some 40% of Fortune 500 companies in 2000 no longer existed in 2010. So people like John Chen, the CEO of BlackBerry, John Antico, the CEO of Black uh, Blockbuster, Stephen Allop, the CEO of Nokia, they have been replaced with this new wave of leaders like Jack Ma from Alibaba, Sheryl Sandberg, uh, Sandberg from Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk, all of these people that we read about on a daily basis, these people have defined leadership. All of these companies 10 years ago, many of them do not even exist today. Another thing that we have to analyze in order to truly understand leadership is how our workplace is going to change. 
What is really great, in my opinion, is that companies are flat, uh, flattening out. So the percentage by which companies have flattened out in the past 25 years, losing management layers in favor of a grid-like structure. So we are losing that management structure when you have the boss, and the boss tells you everything, and uh, you know the little managers do their work. This kind of world is disappearing. Number two, automation, robotics. Some uh, research says that 45% is the proportion of U.S. jobs threatened by automation in the next two decades. 45% of the jobs that we know about that we do now will disappear in two decades. This is very scary. Another thing is people do not want to go to office anymore. They want to do freelance. So Upwork, which is a very famous freelance uh, uh, platform, uh, has around 10 million freelancers registered in 108 countries. And US, India, and the Philippines are the biggest markets for these platforms. We see a big movement here. Obviously, the way the world has functioned, you, go, you wake up, you go to work at 8, you finish at 4. This kind of world, working world, will not exist in the next couple of years. More importantly, a lot of companies right now are investing in wellness, in, hel uh, in healthcare. For example, we work a lot with Unilever, and Unilever gives trackers to the staff because they want to track how many calories the, the, uh, you know, the employee has burned, uh, what the employee has eaten. Obviously, companies like Unilever, like P&G, all these big brands, they want their employees to be healthy. And why do they want the employees to be healthy? Because we see that the retirement age in the next two decades will increase to 67. Today, it's 65 for male, uh, 62, uh, 62 years for female. By 2028, there are predictions that we will retire at the age of 67. So we need to be as healthy as possible. Now, taking in fact how the world is changing uh, and looking at all of these data that I've presented, uh, we go back to one simple question. What is a leader. And if you go to Webster, the dictionary, uh, there is one definition that says a leader is a person who leads, a person who directs a military force or unit, a person who has commanding authority or influence. I don't know about you, but I really feel that this definition is really old. When I think of this definition, I think of this person. And if you go on Google, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, this guy was a leader, but it wasn't the kind of leader that we need to be. But you will notice that definitions of leadership are still very old school, and there are millions of definitions. So um, anyone can create a definition, and I've created my own definition, which I explains my philosophy around leadership. And what I expect from you is to create your own definition of leadership. My definition of a leader is someone that inspires others and helps them find and manifest their, be their best version. And if you really look at all of these uh, leaders that uh, we inspire to become, these leaders that we read about, these are people that inspire others. You look at them, you immediately think, wow, look at this guy. If he has done it, if he has done it with his background, uh, then I can do it also. And then these kind of leaders serve as an inspiration. We see their best version and we think, wow, I really want to be like this guy. Now, another thing that has changed a lot is how should a leader look? The way we've been educated, the way uh, we perceive leaders, very old school, is like this, right? And I see now a, a big trend of all of these people wearing suits and drinking coffees and having lunches in their expensive suits. Uh, so uh, the question is, like, if you wear an expensive suit, are you a leader? Does that make you a leader? I mean, this has to change because, for example, going by old school definition, if you look at this guy and you wouldn't know that he's a Steve Jobs, would you say, oh yeah, he's a leader? No. Or Mark Zuckerberg with his sandals. If you look at him on the street, if you don't know if it's Mark Zuckerberg, what would you say? Oh, this guy is the most powerful guy in the world? No. But these guys have really changed the philosophy of how a leader should think, how a leader should dress. And they're really, what makes them really interesting and inspiring is that they have created their own rules and their own definitions of leadership. So this is the number one lesson in this week's presentation. We will talk a lot about leadership, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to create your own definition of leadership. And that's what matters. Based on, the, based on that definition, you will create the best version of yourself. Another thing that 
bother, it doesn't bother me, but it's, it's, it's making things a little bit more complicated for us is because we live in an era of leadership overload. We live in the era of the wolf of Wall Street. You can do it. Show me the money. We read books about leadership. We have leadership overload. Uh, you know, uh, seven, uh, seven habits of, high, uh, of highly effective people. Seven things that uh, leaders do on the weekend. Seven leaders that you should do on a working day. Seven things that you should do every morning. And to tell you the truth, uh, you know, the thing is, I don't think that Steve Jobs woke up one morning and said, you know what? I only made five of the seven things this morning, so I'm not a leader. What is really important is to take all of this information with a lot of caution, because one more time, all of these people that we admire, all of these people that, people that inspire us, they are creating their own versions of themselves, and they create their own definitions of success, and that's why they're successful, because they don't care what other people have to say about them. They're living their dream, they're walking on their own path, and this is very important for all of you. Actually, this is the greatest lesson. You know, if, if this is the first and last time we have this uh, webinar, is the one thing that I want you to remember is create your own definition of success and walk your own path. Because at the end of the day, and this has happened to me, especially when I started my own business seven years ago, I was reading so many books on leadership because I wanted to make, I wanted to be a millionaire. I thought, oh my God, I'm starting my business in two years, I'll be a millionaire. I'm still not a millionaire. But I'm not depressed about it because I enjoy what I'm doing. But sometimes we attach ourselves so much to this information that is being presented to us that we feel that if we are not millionaires in two or three years, that we are failures. No, walk your own path. Now, if you do, if you Google, if you do research, you will find so many uh, definitions on leadership and so many types of leaders. Um, Based on my beliefs, there are five types of leaders, and I think the best leaders have all five of these traits. Uh, the first is people-centric leaders. These are the leaders that have their employees in the, in the center of everything they do. You know, they give their they take all of their employees on a cruise every summer. Um, they offer hourly worker benefits such as profit sharing. They treat their employees like they matter because at the end of the day, they do. So these are people-centric leaders. Their employees, the people around them, hold, hold the central position within their system. Charismatic leaders. These are the leaders that most of the time uh, we identify with. Uh, you know, people like Steve Jobs. Uh, their passion is intoxicating, which means they easily attract others to follow their calling. And what is really important, and if you've seen the history of companies like Apple and companies like that, you will see that this style of leadership works particularly well in organizations that are going through change or crisis. Because when you're going through a change or crisis, you really need a very charismatic leader to keep the ship afloat. The third type of a leader is disruptive leaders, leaders like Elon Musk. They have very compelling vision and are relentless in their approach towards achieving success. They lead leading edge companies, and most of the leading edge companies like Facebook, like Twitter, like Airbnb, like Tesla, are started by disruptive leaders. They're bold. You know, Elon Musk is not afraid to express his idea. He goes on Twitter, he has an idea, he wakes up, he goes on Twitter, and he shares that idea. He's very bold. He's not afraid to share ideas, his ideas, and he's not afraid to provide solutions for the world. And then you have the quiet leaders. They don't enjoy a lot of fanfare. Uh, they, they gain a lot of satisfaction knowing that they're creating a workplace where people are judged on their talent. Uh, and they succeed by acting rather than talking. Their actions inspire others to do the same. And they also give credit where credit is due, which results in additional exceptional employee performance. And one quiet leader, which is the most popular quiet leader in the beginning, I think in the last few years that's changing a bit, is obviously Mark Zuckerberg. Because he's not about fanfare. He's a very quiet leader. He's more about uh, talking the walk than uh, walking the walk than just talking the walk. And then finally, the fifth category of a leader is collabor collaborative leaders. And collaborative leaders are all about brainstorming. They want to hear different perspectives. 
Uh, they're very transparent. When it's uh, time to make a decision, they want to involve everyone in the decision-making process. In a way, they want they want to make everyone happy. Uh, and employees and employees find this very satisfying because every employee feels that you know their ideas on projects on the on decisions are heard and are being appreciated. So a really quick question, and then you can put it in a conversation based on these five definitions. I would like to hear. Uh, how do you define yourself? Like, what is your type of leadership? Are you a uh, people-centric leader? Are you charismatic leader? Are you a disruptive leader, quiet leader, or collaborative leader? I would love to read your answers. Charismatic. Very good. I think at the end of the day is like the really, really good leaders have all five traits. Because it's very important because uh, you can be a quiet leader, but then you need to have the charisma to inspire others, right? So uh, I think it's all of us actually have all five traits, but depending on the situation, we use different kind of traits. But it's good. It seems that everyone is collaborative. Very good. Now, I've talked a lot about disruption. I've talked about these big companies like Facebook, like Twitter, the way they are changing our world. So I just really want to very quickly define an overview of some of the uh, things that make that make a disruptive leader. What actually is a disruptive leadership? Uh, <coughs> sorry, one thing for a leader always have a cup with your name on it. Disruptive leaders, they are redefining problem solving. They are not sitting in the office and they are thinking like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. I have no idea how I'm going to solve this. They actually work towards the solution. Look at Elon Musk, like the tunnel in, in, that he's building in LA. This is, you know, people have been complaining about traffic in LA for years, and no one has provided a solution to the problem. And then Elon Musk comes and he's like, you know what? Let's build an underground tunnel, and he's doing it. So it's all about problem solving. Another thing that that really makes disruptive leaders. Um, so uh, charismatic and so successful is the fact that they create simple plans. Because what's happening and why big organizations are going to fail is because there's so much bureaucracy. Uh, you know, 10 people have to sign off a paper. It takes ages to make a decision. No, disruptive leaders make really quick decisions. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But they're really quick in the decision uh, making. And they create simple plans that everyone understands. Because one of the, the biggest challenges of companies is that many employees do not understand the vision of the company. They don't know what the company is doing. These disruptive leaders create simple plans everyone understands. Number three, they always test their strategy. They're all about testing. Let's see if this works. Let's see if that works out. They're not waiting for a perfect moment to um, introduce a strategy, to implement a strategy. They're constantly testing strategies. They're very good at communicating changes effectively. And this is where you need, you know, that charismatic part of leadership because changes are very hard for people. So when changes happen between companies, you really need a leader that will sit down and will explain, guys, this is what we're going through. This is what's happening. And this is, these are the things that we will do in order to come out of this mess. And finally, they're breaking the rules and they are embracing the new, the new normal. And you will see, I think the leaders that will um, leave a mark on, on the world in this decade, in the next decade, are really people that are breaking the rules. They're not sitting down and reading, you know, I don't know, a book on the seven habits of leadership, and they're thinking, I will do now these seven things, and if I do these seven things, I will become a leader. No, they're breaking the rules, and they're they are creating the new normal for themselves. Now, I want to go more into deeper into the the psychology and the emotions of being a leader because most of the time when you talk about leadership people think of it as something glossy you know very hollywood i'm a leader i have followers people are following me but being a leader actually uh you need uh, there's so much responsibility and you have to be really careful about behavior about communicating and everything so i want to touch a bit on on the dark side of, of leadership because it's very important. And these are some of the lessons that I've learned from my life. Obviously, maybe you can implement some of them, maybe you won't be able to implement some of them, but I really want to share my, uh, you know, some of the things that I believe are very important if 
in a way you want to create the best version of yourself. Number one is if you got something to say, say it. Because most of the time, um, most of us are afraid to say something because we, we feel that we're going to be misunderstood or you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know what this person is going to say about me. I don't know what people will think if I do this. No. If you got an idea, share the idea. If you got something to say, say it. And I love how Elon Musk is waking up every morning and sharing. And some of these ideas are really crazy and they will not happen. But you know what? He has the idea. He's sharing it with the world. He's sharing his enthusiasm. And this is helping so many people. It keeps them enthusiastic the whole time. I've talked about this, but I will uh, mentioning, mention it again. Create your own definition of success. Don't hold yourself to, oh, this is success. If I don't have this, I'm not successful. You know, it's your path. Concentrate on your path. Uh, in the past, 10 years that I've been in the business world, I've met a lot of people, and one of them is Richard Branson. I met Richard Branson uh, 2007. He was speaking at one of my events. And I spent like a couple of hours with him because uh, I was part of the organization team. And one thing about Richard Branson, first, he's very down to earth. But all the time, he, you know, whenever we had a conversation, you know, off the stage, he would say, you know, I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. And you know, when you're thinking, oh my God, you know, this person who is a multimillionaire, founder of Virgin, uh, everyone inspires, uh, you know, aspires to be him. He's an inspiration to millions of people. And he's saying all the time, well, I'm not that talented. Oh, uh, you know, I'm not that smart. So we had a dinner and then he said something that is really eye opening and I think something that all of us have to concentrate on. It's not about the, uh, the size of your talent. It doesn't mean that if you are really good in school that you'll be really good in life. It's about how you manage that talent. And this is very important. It's all about managing your own talent. Because throughout education, we are always being taught about uh, how to manage people, how to manage situations, but we are never actually taught about how to manage uh, ourselves. You know, how to ma manage our own skills. And what I see uh, with the people that I work with, we live in an era where you have niche leaders. In my country, where I come from, we are learning everything in school. We know uh, we know a little bit about everything, but we're not experts in anything. And this is, this is uh, something that maybe explains the situation we are in. What I see happening in America especially is people, you know, they see that their talent in social media is in social media. They brand themselves as social media experts. Um, they talk about social media, but that's their niche. They're not saying, oh, I'm, I'm an expert in everything marketing. No, I'm expert in social media. So this is very important. Identify, uh, that was before the so-called Cambridge program. Yeah, let's not go into too many details, but what is really important is define your talent and manage it. Manage it. Work on it. Do not compare yourself with others. This is number one. Again, in our cultures, we're always being compared to someone else. These people that we admire, these people that we really identify as true leaders, then they do not compare themselves to anyone. They create their own versions of themselves. And this is very hard, especially if you decide to start your own business. Do we have any people in the group, anyone that wants to uh, have their own business? You can write yes. I just want to see like how many of you have entrepreneurship um, yeah, okay, good. One person. So everyone else is going to work for you, Demi. Good. What is really important is when you start your own business, um, especially in today's age, all of us are being forced to uh, uh, implement a Google way of life. Uh, your office should look like this. Uh, also, I mean, one thing that, that kept me laughing a couple of months ago is Ariana Huffington, who is the founder of Huffington Post, she came out with this idea that all companies need to have nap rooms. And I'm sitting there like, why should I have a nap room in my office? If I don't have a nap room, does that, that, that mean that my office is not cool? That means that, does it mean that I'm not a responsible leader? That means that my, my employees will not be happy? No. Uh, basically, all of these, all of these theories are great. But at the end of the day, when you start on your own business, you create what your business is going to be about. It's great to be a Google, but not all of us can be Google, you know? 
Uh, and there is a reason why Google has swimming pools and like all of these uh, benefits because of the type of a business it is. Next is emotions management, and this is this is very very important because, uh, and we could spend like days talking about this because uh, at the end of the day we are people and we can be great actors, we can be great leaders, but we also have emotions that we need to know how to manage. Uh, and this is something that you really need to concentrate on because when you are, when you are, for example, a business owner or a manager or, you know, a leader of organizations, you know, sometimes you have to do things that do not identify you, but you have to do it for the greater good and you have to manage emotions. Imagine you are, uh, you know, Steve Jobs and then, you know, Apple is going through financial crisis and you need to fire 100 people. It's not an easy thing to do, but someone needs to do it. And it's very hard to do it, but at the same time, you have to do it in, a, in, in, there is no a nice way, but you have to do it in a polite way that it will not discourage the remaining employees, but also will not cause rage in the employees, uh, you know, that are leaving the company. Okay, I have several more, more slides. Uh, have a vision and clearly communicate. And there is, uh, in my, I think uh, if, if you go, if you watched um, Ashton Kutcher's movie about uh, Steve Jobs, there is a really good scene which explains the style of management that Steve Jobs had. In the scene, basically, he tells everyone, this is the font. Uh, you know, they're creating a new Apple computer, and he tells them, I want to have different fonts. I want people to have a user experience. I don't want them to write only on one font. And, you know, six months later, he comes and he's like, hey, guys, what's happening with the fonts? And one of the main IT guys says, uh, well, I don't think the fonts are that important. And then Steve Jobs goes and they're like, what do you mean the fonts are not important? I told him to work on, on the fonts. And the guy's like, well, I felt we should work on some other things. So Steve Jobs fired him. And it's very cruel. And in the movie, his colleague says, uh, you know what? You just fired the best IT guy. And Steve Jobs says, no, we fired the best IT guy that didn't believe in the company. So this is very important. And especially when you start your own business, when you're a manager in, company, uh, in a company, communicate your vision daily. Because people forget. You will be surprised how many employees there are in companies that do not know the vision of their company. And without knowing the vision, how are you supposed to deliver and, and you know, companies create great buildings, offices, products, and everything. But if your employee doesn't understand your vision, then they really cannot do the job that they're supposed to do. Um, leading a purpose-oriented business, if you see a lot of the leaders that we, uh, we talk about, yes, they're making a lot of money. They're millionaires. I would, I'm not sure if their companies are making money. Uh, because, for example, Tesla is still not profitable, Twitter is not profitable, Airbnb is not profitable, and companies like that. But they have, they're leading a very purpose-oriented business. So the purpose of the business is not just to become a millionaire. No, the purpose of the business is to create a greater change in the world. So if you start your own business, Semi, when you start your own business, think about how my business will change the world. How will my business make the life of the customer? Better. Another thing which I feel that disruptive readers really understand really well is understand other people's work capacity. You know, you have to understand the capacity of the people that you work with. You have to understand who can really do the job because we are being programmed to tell people, believe in yourself. I believe in you. You can do the job. But you will come to a point when you will realize that some people cannot actually do the job. And I think great leaders see people's capacity and they give them work or workload according to that capacity. And that's why people feel, uh, you know, people feel happy, people feel encouraged because the leaders very well have identified, you know, the capacity of the person. And, you know, this may seem very foreign to you right now, but when you lead an organization, when you lead a business, when you lead a team, you will see that the successful teams are those that have leaders that have been identified the capacity of each team member. Always see the big picture, you know, because the world today is 
you know, so many things can happen. And I will tell you from my experience, we do business in 30 countries around the world. There are things that bother me all the time. You know, we've been affected by war, by the oil prices, but pretty much everything that happens in the world. And you can really get depressed, you know, uh, really quickly. But I think what makes great leaders is they always see the big picture. And they don't just see the big picture, but they also um, let go of the things they cannot control. And at the end of the day, you know, I think this is really important because most of the time you will keep worrying about things that do not actually, you cannot control. Focus on the things you cannot control. You cannot end the war, the war in Syria. I cannot affect the oil prices. I can control for us to have the best product, for the employees to be happy, but that's about it. Finally, I think what makes a great leader is responsibility. And, uh, you know, for me, it's really, uh, in a way, uh, discouraging when, you know, I talk with people that own companies, people, you know, that are in political parties, and they say, oh, you know, but it's not my fault. It's people in, in my team that, that did it. I think at the end, what makes great leaders is that they always take responsibility. So you're responsible for the biggest success of the company, but you're also responsible, you know, if your company, you know, goes, uh, uh, has debt, goes bankrupt, a project fails. And this is very important. And you will see in the next week, we'll talk about leaders, you know, the CEOs of these big companies that fail because they didn't know how to take responsibility. It's all about taking responsibility. And finally, and I will wrap it up here and um, I will explain the assignments for next week. The greatest leaders adapt to change. It's all, you know, it's very survival of the fittest. And if you think that, you know, uh, what I'm saying is not true, just look at these three companies. Nokia, Blockbuster, Blackberry. Nokia was the number one mobile uh, handset company in the world. Blockbuster, if you lived in the States, I'm sure you know about Blockbuster. We were renting movies out of Blockbuster. And then Blackberry. I mean, my, my first professional phone was Blackberry. And, you know, when I got my first job, when I got my Blackberry, I really felt like, you know, now I'm entering the business world. It's my Blackberry. Blackberry was associated with, you know, when, with making it, with, become, with entering the, the business world. But... At the end of the day, these companies failed because they didn't have good, good leaders. And the leaders did not take responsibility for the actions. So this is Nokia. Um, actually, on the, on the website, there is a PowerPoint uh, which you should download. It has all the videos, and you will see a really nice uh, you know, historical video about Nokia, the first handset and uh, obviously what happened and everything. And if you go through the PowerPoint, it will greatly help you to understand uh, why these companies failed. But in a, in a nutshell, if you look at Nokia, uh, there are four main reasons why it failed. Uh, Nokia failed to respond to the iPhone and the shifting consumer de demand that came with it. Unlike Samsung, Nokia didn't focus on Android. It didn't anticipate competition in the lower end of the market. Nokia was sort of an older brand. There wasn't a new panache to it. Samsung, as a marketed brand, was perceived as an innovator. So Nokia had the legacy, had the legacy, but it simply could not adapt to change. And we are talking about a company that, you know, for two decades was number one mobile handset company in the world. But this is what happens when you cannot adapt to change. I remember talking with Nokia people uh, you know, when, when just shortly before the iPhone was launched and they were, uh, they were speaking at an event in Dubai and most of them were like, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything. You know, there's no way they can take our market share. So, um, and then a couple of years later, that's what happened. <clears throat> Sorry, my employees are leaving the office, so they wanted to see if I have the key. Uh, but there is this, uh, there is this video of the, the, the speech of the, the CEO and of uh, the Nokia CEO, and he gives really an overview of why the company uh, failed. And this is a quote that I love. It says, Nokia lost the smartphone battle because divergent shared fears among the company's middle and top managers, 
led to company-wide inertia that left it powerless to respond to Apple's game-changing device. It was the middle and top managers that could simply could not adapt to the change. Then you have Blockbuster. And then Blockbuster has like one of the, you know, the most depressing failures because when you see the mistakes that they've done, uh, and when you look at it from this pers perspective, you're thinking like, oh my God, how could they do it? Obviously, uh, there was a failure to adapt. Uh, but also you will see that how important it is to, uh, as a business to evolve and include new revenue streams. Blockbuster had only one revenue stream, renting videos. And that's it. You know, throughout the decade, that's what all the money depended on, renting videos. They never think, they never thought of a new revenue stream or adapting, you know, uh, their business model to the new times. Uh, so in 2007, their CEO stepped down. And then one of the biggest mistakes that I think he did, John Atigoko is the, the, the name of the CEO. He had the opportunity to buy Netflix for 50 million in 2000. 50 million, he could have had Netflix. But he didn't want to do it. And as you know, today's Netflix market capitalization is over $50 billion. So the company failed to compete with the online streaming segment of the film industry. And as a result of the sales decline, it became harder for Blockbuster to make its step payment. I mean, this part of the CEO saying that he doesn't want to buy Netflix from me is like, I think the same happened with Microsoft and Yahoo. And then Yahoo was sold for, for peanuts later. Um, and then finally, BlackBerry. And the thing with BlackBerry is uh, they adapted to change, uh, but they made the wrong choices. So they did, they, I mean, they didn't fail to adapt, but they failed to make the correct adaptions. And there is this one, st uh, one story about the, 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 the guy that created BlackBerry, uh, Mr. Lazaridis. Uh, there was a meeting and, and he pointed to a uh, BlackBerry with a keyboard and he said, oh, I get this, uh, that he gets this kind of phone. Uh, but then he pointed out to a touch screen and he said, oh, I just don't get this. I don't think that we should do it. So the company, and, and it sees, and, and you see how one mistake by the CEO can affect, you know, the entire company. And this is all about you, you understand how responsible you are if you're a leader. You know, leader is not just about having the fancy suit. It's not just about, you know, the salary and people saying, oh, I love what you're doing, but it's about making quick decisions in this, in this really historic moment. I mean, the CEO of uh, BlackBerry didn't buy Netflix. Uh, the founder of BlackBerry said, you know, I don't understand this kind of screen. People want to type on a keyboard. They will not be able to type, you know, to type on, on smartphones. So you see that they, they just didn't understand, uh, you know, the times. And also, what is really important is that most of them were surrounded by yes people. And this, I think, it's a mistake that a lot of leaders do. They're being surrounded by people that tell them, yes, you're the best. Yes, you're the greatest. And then you start living in an illusion. And if you start living in an illusion, you basically do not have a perception of the reality. And you're destined to fail. But if you look at all of these companies, like... Uh, Blackberry, Billboard, Nokia, you will see that one thing connects all of these downfalls. And that is all failure is failure to adapt and all success is successful adaptation. Uh, and this is a key lesson, always adapt to change. And the question is, how do you adapt to change? Because it's not like, oh yeah, today I'm going to uh, adapt to change now. I think it's all about education, and your education does not finish with your university diploma. Today, you have to follow trends constantly. Not just follow trends, you have to be way, you know, you have to think of what is going to be next, and this is really hard. And the only way to achieve this is to constantly educate yourself. Follow business news, follow what is happening, because you know, you will see what are the movers and shakers, you see how the world is shaking, so you can really make wise decisions for your business. That's why one thing that I, uh, you know, I always tell myself, um, it's not about the things you read and learn, 
it's about the things you actually implement. You can know everything, but you know, at the end of the day, when crisis hits you, you cannot open the book and say, oh, let me see how the others have handled it. You have to put all of the knowledge into practice. Uh, so I will wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed, I think we're 14 minutes uh, over time. Um, but I, and this is my style of, of presentation and I'm trying to give a lot of personal examples because again, I don't want you to fall in a trap and think, uh, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong or things like that? I just really just, I see myself as a narrator that wants to share my stories. And as I said, I would love, I would love to hear your stories. So send me emails, put some comments and really just, uh, I want to hear your story. What is your definition of leadership? So there are two assignments. One will be graded by, uh, obviously, me and Isaac will grade uh, both. Uh, assignment one, choose a business leader who is a role model for you. Right? Why did you choose him or her? Does she reflect the leadership style you would like to have? And which traits of this leader have similar, similarity as you? So you have to submit your assignment individually. And should be posted to the blog, maximum of 250 words. Mine is a bit more complicated. <clears throat> and actually, you have to do a lot of hard work. But again, for my assignment, I invite you to download the PowerPoint presentation that I have, uh, because it has some great videos about Nokia, Blockbuster, and the Blackberry, and it will help you do the assignment too. So please write a 700 word blog post on the 10 things that Blackberry's leadership team could have done differently to maintain the brand's relevance in a disruptive economy. Ten things. The best, and this is the best part, the best blog is going to be published on the Huffington Post. So I've also put a couple of links to some of the posts that I have written, and obviously they can serve to you as, as, as guidance, but again, I want to see your writing skills, and I really want you to uh, focus on that adap adaptation to change. So imagine you're the CEO of BlackBerry, and you know, you see the companies going, you know, you can feel the companies going down and you write this amazing plan of the 10 things you will do to change the company. Uh, and of course you have to submit your assignment uh, on May 14th, Sunday by 7, uh, 7 Central European time. So do you guys have any questions? Did you have a good time? Oh, silence, okay, good. Well, I had a good time um, and I look forward to sharing more stories about you, uh, about leadership. Next year is going to be really fun because we're going to talk about crisis communications, reputation management. We're going to see some big failures. We're going to see you know big CEOs failing because they couldn't adapt to change and stuff like that. So I wish you a great week. Uh, give your best to write this blog post. Do your research, and I'll see you at the same time next week. Uh, with hopefully with another interesting presentations. See you guys. Bye.